The narrative of freedom and liberty has been allowed to be absolutely politicized. And these are soul issues. These are organic cosmic issues, I'm saying. I had pretty much decided as soon as they arrested me and I found out it was felonies, I'm like, I'm probably just going to run for the border. We've heard remarks like, the best conference I've ever been to, changed my life, it's the most fun thing I've ever done. From Acapulco, Mexico, this is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I've got a great first time guest coming on. It's for a documentary that I think has been kind of being filmed for a, a couple of years now. It's been at least a year, I think. And uh, it's Todd Schramke of the Stateless Documentary. If you haven't seen it, uh, at least the trailer for it, because it's not out yet, uh, you should check it out. In fact, let's play the trailer right now because it's really good. I had pretty much decided as soon as they arrested me and I found out it was felonies, I'm like, I'm probably just going to run for the border. Do you agree that Mexico is a failed state, but that's why you like it? I actually think it's good if all states fail. I don't want any government. When I came to Acapulco, it was the first time for an extended amount of time that I was free of my story. I was free of my narrative. But it's the clipping of wings. It's the silencing of your voice. Those are the things that pointed me, you know, to anarchy. We're anarchist unschoolers. Our, you know, our kids don't go to school. I would sooner send them to a porn set than I'd send them to a, to a public school. Wow. You were in Acapulco uh, with me the last few days, the fourth most dangerous city in the world. It's not that dangerous, it's not that crazy. I would take a hundred of the police here to one of the blue in the States. Because there was this piece of parchment and there were these buildings and people with wigs and all these things happened and ta-da, they have an exemption for morality. That really is cult mythology. We've heard remarks like, the best conference I've ever been to, changed my life, it's the most fun thing I've ever done. It's grown in interesting ways, like this year, the first couple of days, a lot of the people I was talking to were saying, are you here for the Bitcoin conference? And I'm mm -hmm. like, I guess sort of, but I thought it was an anarchy conference. <laughs> if we're going to create a better world, populating it with uh, intelligent, awake little people that are built up in peace, family-oriented environments, we're not going to have these crazy lunatics wanting to run people around and tell them what to do. If this community manages to accumulate wealth while being a beacon for uh, a voluntary society in such a beautiful location, uh, then I think we'll be able to attract more and more people. It seems to me like most people that would come to Acapulco have a decent amount of rejection of like the current American culture. Whereas like a lot of the community is kind of like trying to live the American way, just cheaper here in Mexico. The narrative of freedom and liberty has been allowed to be absolutely politicized. And these are soul issues. These are organic cosmic issues. I'm saying. Is there a limit to the sacrifice that you're willing to make to fix the broken world? The limit is not breaking them, yeah. right? So I don't know if this question is even allowed, but but you oh, can wow. you can say you can't you can, don't we can't can be in here, we can't be in here doing an interview and you use my least favorite word in the English language allowed allowed, sorry, allowed sorry. by whom <laughs> So as you can see, looking really good. And what they plan to do is actually to add a lot more to it and actually want to do a little bit of crowdfunding. And we're going to talk to Todd all about that uh, to, f to fin finish off the project. But uh, Todd, before we get started, uh, I see you're coming in there from uh, California. Uh, first question I have to ask you, though, is how did you become an anarchist? Yeah, yeah. It's an uh, interesting question to ask, actually, me being here in Oakland. I think absolutely most people around here would have a very different uh, idea when you say anarchist. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to even identify that as, as that around here because everyone thinks of the typical black block protester. But my, uh, my origin goes back to, I would say my father was a sort of Bill Buckley kind of small government Republican. Um, and I was kind of always raised with the idea that taxation is theft. 
So that was never something that I really had to learn. <laughs> but for some reason, he always, uh, he always just kind of stopped at that. And then uh, everywhere from there, it was like, okay, but we still need a government for all that. So uh, I eventually, as a teenager, saw some flaws. Maybe, I don't know, him voting for George W. Bush didn't really seem totally consistent. And I started getting into punk rock, which kind of gave me this other anti-authoritarian angle. But everywhere in there still seemed like it was falling short, you know? I, they, These punk bands tended to talk about, uh, you know, anti-authoritarianism, but at the same time, they were going out and getting people to sign up for punk voter at shows and trying to get people to vote for Democrats always as, uh, I mean, they framed it as this platform of opposing the existing establishment, but then they still wanted to participate in the game. So I was kind of lost as a teenager as to what I identified as. I had, on one hand, this distaste all across the board against authority, but uh, I didn't really find anywhere to share that with. So it would be around the 2008 presidential election. I still felt like voting was the thing to do. So that was when Ron Paul first blew up. So I started following him, and then I first learned what libertarianism is, and then it's kind of the standard path from there of, well, Austrian economics and then questioning the government as an entity, as a valid entity entirely. So, uh, yeah, from then on, I, I went and then I, uh, I think what switched me over actually was uh, listening to Free Domain Radio, um, Stefan Molyneux's show and his arguments against the state entirely. And I completely jumped on board with him, and that's actually what uh, eight years ago led me to meeting a couple of the people that are in the community living in Acapulco right now, uh, Juan and Kevin. Um, and uh, yeah, when I followed them, I on Facebook and saw what was going down, I reached out to Juan, and he introduced me to the community, and that's when I started shooting uh, in 2016, October. That's great. Yeah, I, f I thought it had been a few years. I, I remember seeing you talking about this a, a couple of years ago. So it's been in process for a couple of years, and you, you've got it quite developed. But uh, it looks like you want to uh, actually advance it even more now, and uh, you want to come back to Acapulco and do it again and get more footage and things like that, which is great. I fully support it, and I, I'll definitely be uh, donating to your crowdfund uh, after this uh, goes live, uh, put, putting in my part, because I think it is actually quite important that we get some of these stories out there because... You know, everyone gets all the television programming all the time, uh, which is just absolutely horrible and just propaganda. And they rarely get our kind of side of the story. As you mentioned, there in Oakland, if you just said, hey, I'm an anarchist, a lot of people would be really confused, be really upset because they don't hear our sides of the story. They don't get put out on the mainstream media. So the more that we can get these sort of out in documentary form, which who knows could end up on places like Netflix, which could end up on places like in people watching it on airplanes and things like that, or who knows what way people could get it but it really helps to spread uh, at least our side of what we're trying to talk about which we just totally get raped on in, in the total in the media I was just watching one thing with uh, I guess there's a town I'd never heard of it in uh, the US in California in the Sonora Desert called Slate Town or something like that have you heard of this one I uh, I'm not sure what is that uh, it's called Slate Town or something I'd have to look it up but the point the I, I saw a video for it on Facebook and it went uh, this town is the last free place in America, and it calls. And uh, basically, it's just like a, it was a deserted old military base, and a bunch of mostly oh. homeless-looking people kind of ended up living yeah, there. Yeah, Slab City, I think is that what Slab it? City. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was yeah. called. Yeah, so I'm, I'm watching it, and they go, "This is anarchy." And then they talk to a guy, and mm -hmm. the first thing they put in is, "Yeah, you could get shot if you come here." <laughs> and then this, and then the next thing they said was this woman going, "Yeah, if you don't watch your stuff, everyone will rob it because there's no laws or whatever." And it was like. They made it look, I, I don't know what Slab City is like. I've never been there. I actually don't really want to go there from the looks of it. But, <laughs> you know, they just made it look as as horrible as they possibly could. It's just a bunch of homeless guys living there. And actually, most of them seem pretty happy. But they tried to just, you know, make it look as, you know, just that's what the, the media is for, is to basically put their viewpoints into things and make it so, oh, anarchy is really bad. It's really dangerous. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, uh, for your documentary to come out and hopefully 
lot of people support you. We'll talk about the crowdfunding for it. But maybe you could talk about how, uh, uh, were you a filmmaker before? Is this your first attempt at it? And then get into some of the process of making the film and how that's been for you. Yeah, I started making videos when I was 12 years old, uh, just recording stuff with friends. And then uh, eventually when I was 18, I was good enough that people started paying me to do video production. So I've been doing professional video production for over 10 years and doing some documentary short films. And I finished my first feature documentary in 2017, uh, which is something that's still looking for distribution. Uh, always film stuff can get lost in the mix, but hopefully that will be coming out. It was called Misty Dawn. Um, but yeah, this was this is probably the biggest undertaking I've had so far. Uh, it's been surprisingly, uh, I don't know, everything's gone so well so far. Everyone in the community has been so welcoming and open to be on camera. And uh, I definitely get the sense that everyone there has that desire to have their stories told and to be humanized and to not just be this sort of evil anarchist or naive anarchist, but to actually be real intelligent people who have nuanced viewpoints about the world and actually care about things, care about everyone really, and, and want the world to be better. And, uh, it, and coming to that, I think even with this film, I want it to appeal to a general audience. And even if people aren't completely swayed by everyone's viewpoints in the film, if anything I want, all of the characters that I'm featuring to uh, just come across as reasonable people and to be understood and not to be presented as this sort of other. So yeah, I'm, I've been doing this for a little while, uh, but yeah, this is a, a pretty big project for me and the most I've traveled so far for a project. Yeah, that's great. And as you mentioned, it is good to get sort of our stories out there it's just not out there that much and if it is it's heavily slanted against us saying you just pick any sort of bad sort of word they'll use uh just uh those those dangerous anarchists those, you know, it's, we just believe no one should be slaves that's it it's yeah. like of all, all the things that they're able to attack so easily it's unbelievable it's just amazing how well they really can control minds out there and really that's what government is right govern control meant here in mexico mente mind it's it's literally mind control and they do it through the television television programming and it's called programming for a reason in the 12 years of indoctrination camps and all that kind of stuff but it is really amazing just to see how well it works because we are like of all the people that you want to call dangerous we're like don't hurt anyone <laughs> that's all we're saying like sorry my mic keeps dropping here don't hurt anyone uh and yeah these these guys are dangerous so so it's really good you're you're helping to get that story out um this might be the i don't know if this is the first documentary done on an archipelago i think it might be though uh so I think you're kind of ahead of the game a little bit because Anarchapoco is turning into something pretty amazing in my opinion. So you'll have some really good uh, historical sort of footage of the beginnings of this uh, event that has really grown into something all of its own now. Um, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, why you feel you need to continue to film the documentary even though you've been doing it since 2016 and you want to raise a bit more funds to, to, do, to do even more? Yeah, it's... I really i want to in the film show the community as it's evolved over time while we did a lot of filming that was actually at the conference uh the film itself is not specifically about the conference the conference serves as part of a backdrop to some of the film but really i want to tell the story of the evolution of the community and the intentions of everyone that went there and also how it's changed over the past couple of years and uh, I think a lot of the people there have learned a lot of lessons and have learned a lot about themselves. And it's been interesting to see a, a bit of a shift over time and how when I first went there, it was very much about the government and it was about getting away from the government and it was about how to not pay taxes. But there was definitely, especially in the last trip uh, in Anarchapulco, a very, very different vibe. And there was much more internal work going on and there was much more thought being put into how can I free my own mind and use that as the action that's taken in order to eventually reach the macro level and change society structurally. So that, that's why I, I want to go back one more time and why I'm shooting this in pieces is because it's, it's not just about the event, it's about watching the community. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it is really interesting. Uh, for people out there who don't know, I, I had no intention of making Acapulco into a place where a lot of anarchists go to. I'm here. <laughs> uh, I started a conference here because I thought we had a need for an anarchist conference, but there really was no intention to have some sort of community here. Uh, that's never been anything I've ever really talked about or anything. But over the years, as Todd knows, many people have just sort of come down for the conference and just stayed afterwards. And I don't know how many there are now, Todd, but I, I've heard estimates. I see like a new person almost every week now just sort of pops up and they just show up. You see them in there. We've got a TDV group, by the way, if uh, you want to maybe get into the community more, it's uh, just look up on Facebook. TDV group, uh, Acapulco, and you'll find it. Um, and uh, yeah, I see people showing up all the time. So yeah, it's really been changing and it's really been interesting as far as a community kind of goes. Um, and I think it's great that you're going to continue to cover this evolution because as you pointed out, it really has evolved. It used to be mostly angry, mostly upset, a lot of drinking, a lot of the government sucks. And now it's a lot of, a lot more of people going, hey, I got to fix myself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of change in my own mind uh, that are even worse than the government in many ways that I should fix. And it's really moved towards that. So I'll be really interested to see how you uh, can cover that. So as we mentioned, we, there, you will be doing a uh, fun, uh, crowd raising for it. Maybe you can mention a little bit about it now. How much are you raising and where people can go if they'd like to donate? Yeah, so our basic number we're trying to hit right now is 10,000 US dollars. Uh, and that's going to just cover the most basic costs of uh, at least doing the trip and then getting through post production and doing the editing and the mixing and all of that. I, I do a lot of it on my own, but I it, to get this onto a major platform, uh, to get it ready for something like Netflix or film festivals, you have to have that extra money to actually get everything all to their standards. So, and then after that, there's a whole, I mean, this is still considered a very micro budget level film. Anything under a hundred thousand dollars is in the industry considered pretty small. So I'm hoping we can get that 10,000 and keep building up from there because uh, it would be great to have a little bit of a marketing budget and actually be able to promote this to the world. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be donating a thousand dollars of my own uh, right after this, and I'm hoping that a lot of the people out there will uh, donate as well. As sort of chip in ten bucks, twenty bucks. If you know, there's thousands of people watching this. There you go. I already got it. And five bucks each, actually, for every view. Uh, this will probably get about what about five thousand, ten thousand views. It's actually down quite a bit. We're being kind of like shadow banned all over the place. But let's say it's about uh, ten thousand views eventually. Uh, if everyone just donated a dollar, I don't know if you can even do that on your crowdfunding platform, but. Uh, uh, there you go. You already got it done. So, you know, if you really believe in the message of anarchy and you want to change things, um, and this is what most anarchists want, we want to see the world change. These are ways that you can do it. Just throw in five bucks right now. Just uh, the links down below. Uh, if you can, if you got a lot of money, if you've been making tons on Bitcoin over the last few years or something, and throw in 50 bucks, throw in 100 bucks, throw in more if you want. But the point is to, to you know, that is true uh, democracy. That is how we actually change the world. Money is called currency for a reason. It's literally... A, uh, like a current of electricity and that's how we transfer energy uh, and the elites know this that's why they took over the money uh, supply system over the last hundred years or so with fiat currencies because when they control it they can control everything that goes on in this world and it's basically true that's what what's going on right now but we can too especially with cryptocurrencies and things like that or even if you got fiat dollars by using your fiat currencies to generate energy for something like donating to something like this crowd fund uh, you will make something happen something actually will happen in the world it's, it's quite amazing when you think about it uh, if everyone goes and puts five, ten bucks right now, this will actually happen, and this will be maybe on Netflix or something like that, and people will go, oh, I didn't know, the anarchists don't seem that bad, or whatever it is, but it, it will actually change things. So, uh, Todd, uh, really looking forward to it. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to get this done one way or another, but obviously the more that people can support you, the better the product will be, and I'm really excited to see the final product. And I know you're also uh, in a band uh, that you're about to go on tour with, so maybe you can also mention that for people who are into whatever kind of music it is because i don't even know what kind of uh, band you're in but you mentioned it before the show <laughs> yeah yeah uh me and my girlfriend actually who's helping me with this film she if you were at anarchapulco you may have met her her name is kim kyland mm -hmm. uh, we're touring around the entire western united states in july the band is called kyland which is her last name uh as far as what type of music it is it's indie folky pop rock music uh it's not themed toward anything related to the film. It's just personal 
uh, songs that we've worked on together and it's a show we've put together and we have an EP that we, our debut EP just came out a couple months ago. So we're going to be touring off and on over the next year to support that. So we'll eventually be hitting the entire United States. Uh, so I can give you the, the link to reach some of that music. Well, we actually just found some video and audio of Kylan. So here's a little bit if you want to check out the music. So that's great, Todd. You and your girlfriend will be on tour. And uh, where can people find out about tour dates for uh, uh, your your tour? Uh, Best Base is probably on Facebook at facebook.com slash Kyland Music or on Instagram at Kyland Music. Great. And so check that out as well. And as I mentioned, if you, if you want to see this... Uh, a documentary called Stateless, Get Finished, and Get Finished Really Well, and possibly be in things like Netflix and all the the, the uh, film festivals and things like that. Uh, definitely contribute. We'll have the links to that all down below. As usual, just always support anything uh, that you think is good. Uh, that's that's one of the only ways we can do things in this world. So you just like, subscribe, share down below. We can use a lot more likes and shares out there if you enjoy this content. It just helps us get the content out more and, and helps to wake people up. And uh, in the meantime, that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. There was an idea. To bring together a group of remarkable people. To see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles that they never could. In time, the state will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that it's right, yet to fail all the same. Read it. Run from it. Freedom still arrives. Vacate the state. Engage all the speakers. And get this man a microphone. Fun isn't something that one considers when eradicating tyranny. <laughs> but this does put a smile on my face. Who the hell are you guys?